Hey YouTube, Winston here. Last week, I wired up my Shapeoko 2 CNC and blundered my way through running a sample program from the Shapeoko website, helloworld2.nc. In this week's video, I'm going to generate some simple G-code of my own in MakerCam and use it to mill a pattern in cardboard as a test. But instead of following the first job tutorial on the Shapeoko instruction site, which has you drawing line segments and rounded rectangles, I'm creating an SVG file in Inkscape and uploading it to MakerCam for processing. This kind of workflow will be more representative of what I want to do in the future, since the complexity of what you can design in a browser is quite limited. Someone will probably prove me wrong about that. But before I jump into Inkscape, I want to go over a tiny quick modification I made to my Shapeoko. The belt clips on the Y-axis maker slide are just wide enough to interfere with the V-wheels on the carriage plates. Because the reachable work area of a stock Shapeoko 2 is a hair under 1 foot square, and some of the materials I want to machine come in a 12 inch by 12 inch form factor, I wanted to do everything I could to maximize the range of the Shapeoko and make the most of my investment. There's not much you can do on the X-axis because the V-wheels on the Y-axis interfere with the X-axis carriage plates, but on the Y-axis, it's possible to squeeze out an extra inch of travel by sanding down the belt clips so the V-wheels can roll over them. It's not a lot, but every little bit helps. So back to the fun stuff, generating some G-code and running my first real test project. I started in Inkscape since it's a pretty straightforward way of making SVG files that can be opened in MakerCam, and if I can't get Heekscam to process STL files in the near future, Inkscape will be my go-between, converting DXFs to SVGs for use in MakerCam. In the default canvas, I started off by making some text. I didn't really care about font size since I would scale the text later to be a quote-unquote nice size. If you're not going to do any placement editing or scaling in Inkscape, it'll be fairly important to locate your pattern in a logical location. I like 0, zero. Before saving my beautiful canvas as an SVG, I selected the text I'd written and went to Path and then Object to Path. Then I ungrouped the letters. I saw this step in a 2D SVG to Heekscam tutorial, so it probably does something useful. After opening my SVG in MakerCam, I selected each letter and applied a pocket milling operation to them. If you don't select the letters individually, you won't be able to adjust the order of milling operations. You'll see why this can be bad later, since my footage of the test run is from an earlier attempt at generating G-code, and I totally goofed it up. If I wanted to do more than engrave some letters, like make the drink coaster from the Shapeoko example, I could have thrown a rectangle or circle around the text and had MakerCam run a follow path operation on that shape. After you've exported your G-code, you should open up the NC file and make sure all of the numbers make sense. I specifically arranged my project to lie in the first quadrant, so all of the X and Y values in the CNC program should be positive. You can also check the Z values to make sure you're not milling too deep. In my first NC file, for example, I realized I set the cutting depth as 0.625 inches instead of 0 0.0625. Once everything checked out, I went about setting up my first job. My knockoff dremel of a spindle was finally attached to the Shapeoko, and I selected a two-flute straight-edged end mill. The flat cutting face is designed not to push fibrous or laminated materials vertically, resulting in a smoother finish on the outside surfaces, at least in theory. I thought about engraving something in wood, but after checking my stock of plywood, I decided it was all too warped to use. I wanted to machine something cheap and thick so that any accidental over milling wouldn't touch the wasteboard. I settled on a couple of layers of cardboard taped together. I ran a contact-free test pass to make sure the G-code wasn't commanding anything too unreasonable before lowering the end mill to the surface of the cardboard a few tenths of a millimeter at a time. After zeroing the machine, I clicked send. What resulted was the least efficient milling job known to mankind. Watching this still makes me facepalm. Alright, so we know the code works. The rest of the job doesn't matter, so I'm going to talk over it. For future milling operations, I'm going to either cut at a higher spindle speed or use a real Dremel. I was running the rotary tool at around a setting of 2, and at low speeds it has truly awful torque and RPM consistency. Just listen to the cheap spindle and compare it to a real Dremel. Yeah. 
I'm also going to lower the feed rate a tiny bit. This job ran at 30 inches per minute, but I've heard of hardwood being milled at around 20 inches per minute. I should also adjust the depth of the cut depending on the material. Here I went with the default step size and maker cam, but I definitely could have milled out this cardboard in one pass. So, it only took me three weeks, but I now have a fully functional desktop CNC milling machine, and just as importantly, a viable workflow for future projects. Next week, I'm going to be doing a slightly more invasive upgrade to my Shape Oko. I'm planning on sinking some threaded inserts into the MDF wasteboard so I can probably bolt down workpieces instead of using tape. I'm also hoping to test another method of G-code generation using Heekscam. Those will be the last steps before I can start making real projects that I feel comfortable sharing on the Shape Oko forums. Alright, I'm done rambling, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.